If you have ever wanted to live forever, well, now you can, at least digitally. Companies are calling it digital immortality. This is a push to create a computerized version of yourself that lives on long after your physical body dies. Joining us with more on this is futurist Nicholas Badminton. Uh, Nick, I said that this was like an episode of Black Mirror. I cannot believe this is technology that exists and the applications are astounding. A number of companies and universities say they are looking into the idea of uploading your brain to a computer. How does that work? So I am my connectome and you are your connectome. So that's the uh, the combination of all your neurons and the trillions of connections between them, the synapses. And, and that's a map of our memories and our consciousness, uh, everything that we hold hold dear to ourselves, the self. Uh, so, so people are trying to decode that and they've been trying to do that for, for over 100 years now. Uh, but in the past uh, few years, like 10, 10 years or so, there's been lots of uh, work that have really started to work out how all of all of this information is stored once you can do that then you can uh, digitalize that and once you can do that on a scale of a human brain well then the sky's the limit for creating replicas of ourselves so would the process actually transfer your consciousness into a computer or would it be like a digital clone of yourself yeah, so so it, it's like just like a photocopy of who you are at that particular point in time. So y y I could take a, a version of myself and download that and upload that potentially into some kind of robotic entity, whether that's virtual or actually real, something that can uh, wheel itself around. And that's a version of, of Nicholas Babinson at the age of 48, right? Uh, and it, it's interesting because I still keep who I am, uh, but people can then interact with me or a version of me somewhere else. It's fascinating. Uh, you know, like this technology, Microsoft was granted a patent for in December. This is a project that would allow people to speak to a loved one after they die. How does this work? So this is a little bit more simple. So we, we pour data into the internet uh, through through texting each other, emails, images, social networks. If we can capture all of that from our entire lives, we could download that, use natural language processing, bring that together, deliver that in an application, and then we can speak uh, to ourselves or we can speak to the relatives uh, th that we've encoded within that system as well. So that virtualization is, is a real breakthrough in terms of teaching chatbots to be more human but i love the idea of creating second selves of our, of who we are online so that maybe if someone passes away it can help with the grieving process or if we miss someone we don't go to a graveyard we just uh, open the application and have a conversation i can't even imagine uh, how that changes even the grieving process obviously there are some ethical issues at play here what do you think about some of these ideas you, you know, we do have to consider some ethical boundaries. I think the idea of uh, potentially mapping the brain, downloading that, and then letting that run run free has got some problems. We, we have to work out what we're trying to do here. We're trying to understand the human brain. Once we can understand that a little bit more, that helps with medicine. It helps with uh, psychological conditions, mental health, and whatever. That's really good. If we start using that for nefarious uh, uses, uh, someone's pretending to be you, or they want to download you know, a virtual uh, version of a, of a celebrity, or a politician, then things could get pretty scary. I like the real life Nick Badminton at 48, just as he is. And I'll enjoy him 10 years from now as well. Nick, thanks so much. Thank you so much. I'll chat to you soon. Hey, thanks for watching. If you liked this, be sure to subscribe here, or you can check out more Your Morning videos right here.